Hey, what's happening everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here. Here we are in a game called Astroneer. Now, if you've never heard about this game, this is a survival space game where you go to planets and you build things, and it's very much like No Man's Sky in that exploration sense. It's super cool, and I played it about maybe about a year ago. And when I played it, it was somewhat limited, and so I kind of stopped playing it after a couple hours. But recently, they've just released this update they call the Crafting Update. They added a new, uh, whole bunch of new features. I thought it was a good time to dive in. And I found the game a lot different from when I last played it, but I also found it somewhat difficult to dive into it. There, there's actually a tutorial included with this, and the tutorial itself I found really hard. In fact, I died a couple of times. So I figured that if I was having problems playing or getting up to speed with Astroneer, probably other people may be as well. So that's the focus on this video. I'm gonna walk you through getting started with Astroneer. All right, so here we got a bunch of uh, saves. Let's um, let's do this. We'll grab this guy here, and we're gonna launch the game. Now, one of the really cool things about Astroneer is that it's just, it's a very seamless experience. It's also a very minimalist UI. So you can see we were just at the intro. Now we're going right to the planet, like just like that. And they, they really approach this just, or the developers have really approached this to um, keep all the UI out of your face. And in doing so though, they've made it somewhat difficult to play. It, they make it hard for you to learn new systems. All right, so I've landed here and I'm using my right mouse button and I'm just scrolling around, so that's cool. And I'm gonna be using my WASD keys to move. All right, so you can see the F1, let's just click that and let's get out of here. Okay, so here's my dropship. I'm on my new planet. I'm gonna exit my dropship by pressing E and you'll notice a new thing will appear. Huzzah! Woo! Look at look at that seat fly away. All right. Look at this. Woo! All right. So this structure is my habitat. This is um, basically my base, my home away from home, so to speak. And uh, I can go inside of this thing to save the game. So we'll hit E to enter. Woo! Look at that. And you can see down here it's the saving game. All right. Let's get out by holding E as well. You also notice that I have a, like, this blue tube being connected with to me. This tube is my oxygen supply. And without oxygen, well, you know, you die. It also provides me power. And you can see on my backpack here, I'm going to press the Q key. And you can see this yellow symbol here. That's my power supply as well. So I want to make sure that I have lots of oxygen and lots of power. Now, if I go too far away, boop. Look at this. Uh, I'm now out of range of my habitat. Now I'm losing oxygen. And you can see this, this meter here is slowly getting low. If you run out of oxygen, you die. Damn the rules. I didn't make it. I'm just playing it. So what you can do is ultimately go far, like a little, little bit further away from the hab, but you're gonna wanna re reconnect to it so you can get your oxygen renewed. So it, I'll get close and you can see it's filling up. So those are the two main resources you need to keep an eye out throughout the game. It's kind of like fooled in water, but not as tedious, I'd say. Okay, over here is a landing pad. Now in co-op, I believe people will come down and land. We also can get some starter, some starter gifts, so to speak, from our landing pad. So I'm going to hold down the Q button. And you can see this is our, our user interface for the, um, the landing pad itself. I'm going to initialize our cargo drop, and I'm going to do that by pressing this green button. Woo! Just like that, and I'm gonna get rid of this by hitting the Q button. Maybe not. Hitting the escape button. Woo! <laughs> okay, so here we have two things. First, we have our printer, and now we have our starting platform. The printer is what we use to craft things with, and the starting platform is what we what what the basically the printer needs to be put on something. So we need platforms. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna move it here. Let's just put it all any, anywhere. And now I can expand this by holding the E key. Woo! So here's my here's my um, platform, and you can see it, it has like these these things here. I don't know what you call it. attachment points where I can put things onto it. And of course, I can move this around like so. All right, now let's get our printer. I'll pick this up here. I'll come over to our platform, and I can put it onto one of these attachment points. Put it say right here, and. Once I connect it, you'll see that I still have to unpack it. So I have to hold E again. 
All right. I got my 3D printer. Look at that. Pretty cool. What do you guys think? Okay. So I can examine it by holding the Q key. A lot of the keys are the same. And you'll see here we have a couple options. I can make a large platform where, again, I can put things on. And I can put a research chamber. Research chamber takes one resin and two compounds, whereas a large platform takes two resin. Okay, so where do we get these things? Well, don't worry about that right now. The big thing to worry about is this red thing here. This basically indicates that this has no power. So we need to power this up. So how do we do this? Well, as I mentioned, the HAB gives us unlimited power. So let's uh, let's hook this up. And we can do this by this little thing here. Whoop. You see this cable plug? We just plug it right in here. And look at that. We get power. Just like that. I don't know what I just did there. <laughs> All right, hold Q again. And now you can see that symbol is gone. All right, now we're cooking with gas, guys. So when I first when I first started playing this, I thought like I had to create my own generators, so I had a string of generators that I was running. But nope, you'll get everything from your habitat. Your habitat is your friend. Okay, so we need now to get some compound and we need resin. Well, you'll be happy to know that we have some literally right next to us. See this gray stuff here? This kind of looks like boogers. <laughs> this is our compound. And we can mine this by pressing the E key. Now, you can't really see here because it's in the dark, but I have a big old gun here, or my mining drill. And now I can just point with my uh, cursor, or my mouse, and then choose where I want to start mining. So I can hit the left mouse button. Each time you hear that sound, that means I'm getting a new resource. So I have three, four, We have five now. And six. All right. And what's also cool is you can see that the, the mining, the miner or my drill deforms the landscape. And you can use that like to, if you're going down like a, a really sharp cliff, you can cut stairs into it. Now you can see here we have salvage and things like that. We'll get into that in a little bit. All right, I'm running out of oxygen. Let's get back to our hab. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm dying! I'm dying, guys! There we go. Okay. Now, it's a little hard to see. I'm going to hit Q, and I'm going to zoom in on my backpack. You can see here we have these slots already filled in. We have these for our compound. As you get different resources, they'll appear here as well. You can see this is what I was actively mining when I stopped mining. Okay, now our backpack can also be used to craft things. Right now, it's being selected for oxygen tethers. These are really useful. We also have canisters and filters. So, oh, and a generator as well. And we can build a small printer. What I do want is a tether bundle. And you can see here that this will basically just take one compound. I'm gonna press this button here. Now you can see it's also taking power from my backpack, but because I'm connecting to the hab, I get my power back. I'm going to create another one of these. All right. Now I'm going to press Q again to make my backpack go away. Huzzah. So tethers are your lifelines. And they're, they, um, they basically will send oxygen from the hab to you. So if we want to go out this way, let's see if this is where I think our resin is. I'm holding down shift to run, by the way, and I believe shift to run will actually use more oxygen. So here's our resin. Now I could mine this and run all the way back and keep on going back and forth to resupply my oxygen, or I can just simply place tethers. So here we'll get our oxygen up. Now I'm gonna, what is that over there? Okay, so I'm gonna hit the, the T the T button drops a tether. Now, in this case, my tether is too far away from my hab, so I'm going to hit E to get my gun away, or my, my drill away, and I'm just going to move this closer. Now you can see a line appears. This, t this lets me know I'm in range of the hab, so we'll just put that there. And now I'll just drop another one, and now I just can, can just keep on dropping tethers. Pretty cool. Look at that! One of the nice things about the tethers is that they also 
show me the way back to my base. So I can go, I can make a ton of these things, go halfway around the world, and then just simply backtrack. All right, I got my drill open. Let's get some resin. All right. You see we have this little doodad over here. I'm going to hold down, press T again, and let's start laying tethers. And look at that. Just flies off into the ether. <laughs> I love it. So you can see we got a couple other resources here as well. We have, I believe this is, oh, this is ceramic. And you can see my, my backpack is filled up, but I can, sometimes you can put things onto the sides and even on your drill. So, and this is organic. There we go. Okay, let's head on back. Okay, so we have lots of resin. We have lots of compounds. So what I want to do now is make a large platform. So I'm going to hit Q on my printer. And you can see here we have plenty of resin. So we're just going to press this green button. And I love this little thing here. This, this is so that you don't accidentally start up crafting. And I wish every game had this kind of feature. Here we go. So here you can see it's making our platform. Let's head over here. Now one thing about these tethers, I like to walk when I'm placing tethers. And once the tether disappears, I immediately hit the T button. That drops another one. Up. And so that way I'm always dropping and walking. But once I already have a line created, then I just shift run. And I'll just like shift walk and you'll run along there. But it's really, really hard to run and place tethers at the same time. See, I can do this, but it's also, it's not an optimal placement. Whereas if you just walk, you'll know exactly, you won't miss it. You'll know exactly what the length is, and that way you can optimally place your tethers. So you can see here, we have scrap here. This is salvage. We could ultimately, at some point down the road, use the salvage. There's a structure called a scrapper that we can drop salvage into and get components from it. And that's pretty useful. But for now, it's just going to be junk laying around. All right, so our platform is done. So I'm going to select this. And let's put this here. And let's expand this out. Woo! There's my platform. Okay, the next thing I want to do is build my research lab. So I'm going to select this. And uh, oh, I'm pressing Q. And you can see we got our large platform. I want a research chamber. So let's get this going. Essentially, the way Astroneer works is we upgrade our technology and we upgrade our technology through research. And this to me is probably not a favorite mechanic of the game. It kind of reminds me almost of a free to play game where you're kind of stuck in a holding plat pattern while things are, are working in the background. But essentially, I can hold down Q and you'll see by holding down Q, I open up my research. And these are things that I can craft. So right now I have tethers. You can see we have canisters. And then I can use these arrow keys to sort of cycle through them. The, these red arrows here is the current thing that I'm looking at. So I can hit this right arrow. And now I'm looking at the canister. Then I can hit down, down. So you can see we have lots of these different things that we can build. Now these purple things are things that I don't know how to make yet. And that way, that's why they're purple. To actually access them, I need to pay some research. And you can see that this costs 800. Some of them cost 1,000, some of them are 2,000, and so forth. All right, our printer is made. Let's select this. And we're gonna bring this over here and drop it here. And let's unpack it. The way you get research is by using research chambers. And this is kind of like an RTS in a lot of ways. And what you can do is you add things to research and it gives you points. Those points accumulate to your research, which you can later spend to unlock things. Now, different materials can be researched. So in this case, we have resin. I'll drop this here. Now I'm going to hit Q again, and then let's open up E. And then let's hit Q one more time. And you can see this is our research. It says press button to begin research. Okay. Now what I have to do first is power plug this thing in. So let's go go out of here. Here I'm pressing random keys and we can plug this. 
Now, one thing to know about these platforms is that you can daisy chain them to other platforms. So you can have a bunch of platforms and then I can link this one over to, to another one and so forth. All right, so let's get our research going. So I'm gonna hit Q. I'm gonna flick this open and press this button. So you can see it's, it starts off with 100 bytes. It's doing 32 bytes a minute. And you can, you know, do your math. You can see here, two, 200 and uh, you can see this is going to be two minutes or three minutes to get those 100 bytes. So what this tells you is that you're going to need lots of research chambers and you want them always to be researching things. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's open up our printer and let's make ourselves another research, but I'm going to need a platform. So let's get some more resin. Okay, we're going to build another platform. And looking at my research, you can see now I have 73 bytes. Still not enough, but we're getting started. Now you see we have other options up here as well. We can choose these different categories here. We can build our medium platform. We haven't unlocked medium platform B, a drop ship, splitter, and so forth. So you're gonna wanna go through all of these. And ultimately what you're gonna wanna do is cross-reference them to the Astroneer Wiki. So here's our shredder and it will tell you what you need iron and tungsten and each material can be found in various biomes as well okay now i am being stuck in a storm there are two ways to deal with the storm one you can dig a hole in the ground and hang out there until the storm is over or two you can be like me and check it out and go right in the hab All right, that looks like that's the end of that storm. You don't want to stay out in a storm because storms can kill you. <laughs> I know because I've died many times from them. There's nothing worse than being like completely far away from the hab and a storm kicks in and you're like, I think I can make it. I think I can make it back to my hab and then you die. <laughs> so either dig a hole in the ground or hide in your hab. So. By digging a hole, let's, uh, I'll show you what I do. I just go in here. And I just go down here. Like that. And you'll see that I'd be, I'd be at this point completely safe from the storm. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's daisy chain this up. There we go, we got that working now. And um, our research is done. We need more research, so let's uh, research this resin. You can see here, this has 100 bytes. Let's do it. And let's build ourselves another research chamber. Now, each of these items takes power and this hab I from what I understand has unlimited power so you can build all the things around here but as you begin to explore you can build vehicles and explore the planet you're gonna need to build generators that will require power sources so just keep that in mind as you start planning out your bases there's another way to get research and you can see over here we have these like pillars. Let's check these out. Now, if I select these, I can hit E and you can see I gain bites by researching these. And here we can have more salvage and here we have more salvage over here. It's pretty cool. And we're running low on oxygen. You can see there's a cave system down there, which is really cool. There's lots of cave systems in this game, which are really fun to explore. Uh-oh. Here we go. 
I tend to suffocate in this game. <laughs> and here's our printer. So let's bring this up here. And let's unpack it. And we'll add the organic here. And we'll activate this. Now, if I go to my research catalog, we have 458 bytes. And what I can do is now build my smelting furnace. So I can access this and that unlocks the schematic. So I can come back to my printer here, hit Q, and I am inside, I am out of my face! <laughs> I was actually in the geometry there. So you can see we have our smelting furnace uh, right here. And this just takes two resin and one compound. Now, this is a medium printer. You also have small printers, and there may be a large printer, I believe. And you also have your backpack. And you also have your backpack, which can create other things as well. So each printer can create a variety of objects. So if you unlock, say, a schematic, and it's not in your medium printer, it may be in a different printer. And I believe that these are probably related to that. So this is in your backpack right here. This is probably your medium printer. It's probably your large printer, and uh, this could be from, there's like a vehicle construction, so that's probably from there as well. So again, you're going to want to check out the wiki for more information. The idea for this tutorial is to get you started with this game, because again, I kept on dying, I couldn't figure out the systems. It took me a bunch of hours, but it's incredibly fun, quite addicting, and I think you'll, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Alright guys, if you found this tutorial useful, feel free to hit the like button. And if you want more tutorials on Astroneer, let me know in the comments below. In any case, thanks again for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. See you then.